what you should know about hiring people. This is the first video about not hiring the wrong person that destroys your team and cripples your output as a team and give you more headache as a manager. My personal background is assessing over 7,700 individuals as a professional government agent face to face. Hiring developers, UX designers, salespeople, managers, and administrative staff. I have been investigating if there is a concern for physical or mental disabilities and disorders in combination with their education and work experience. Then assessing the likelihood of them getting a job or not based on those facts. When you do thousands upon thousands of assessments with so many people in real life, you start seeing patterns in verbal language, body language and behaviours. I have also been working closely with psychologists that evaluated my clients for physical mobility issues and personality. The uh, government agency I worked for used Big 5 as a diagnostic tool to evaluate personality and likelihood of getting a job. How lucky are you in your choices? Firstly, you should know that you as a person evaluating if someone is suitable for the job has a 62% probability that you choose the correct person. Flipping a coin has a probability of 50%. So you add only 12% to the equation. If you are a bad listener and you don't know what to listen for, I would simply delete the 12% and use the coin. It will save you the, your budget, or will it? But adding personality and empathy level to the hiring process will give you facts that will guide you to make a more solid choice that might contradict your personal bias. It is also very well documented in the literature that hiring managers are biased. They also hire due to the interviewee's attractiveness and gender. Female hiring managers. Female managers will hire tall men with broad shoulders and with symmetrical faces and with a bass voice. If they have a blue shirt on, they also add to the probability of getting hired. But female managers also hire minorities to create equality no matter what the merits due to diversity, equity and inclusion, if that is their value in life or the company policy. However, if you are a more attractive woman than the hiring woman, the probability of you getting hired is severely lowered due to intersexual competition. You see, women compete for good quality men regardless if they already are in a relationship or not. It's biology. There are not all that many men that are good men according to women because a man needs to fit a certain personality profile. Male hiring managers. Male managers will most likely hire an attractive young female if she has the merits or is able to learn if there is a male with equal merits in the process. Male managers are more interested in getting the work done, so they tend to hire based on merits, but also what they want to have around them every day in the workplace. Same goes for the color blue, since 80% of people on the earth love the blue color. Now you know some of the biases we have as different genders without even being aware of them. I will explain more about what attracts male managers in other videos as well as female managers. And remember, of course, there are extreme values on either end of the spectrum. So this does not incorporate all women managers or male managers. Always consider that. There is a wide range of different behaviors and biases, and some of the biases may, might not fit every single person. So there is a difference. Takers, matchers, and givers. In science, they always measure the cost-benefit ratio in all relationships. You're also calculating the cost-benefit ratio yourself every single day. But when you calculate it, you call it what's in it for me. The basics that all normal people strive for is a one-to-one -one relationship when performing things for others. That is called being a matcher and is about 50% of the population. Of course, this differs depending on personality and mental disorders. A narcissist feels entitled to more because they feel they are more important than other people. 
So their ratio might be giving one and demanding five in return. A psychopath is greedy and will most likely not give anything, but they will try different tactics to take everything from others. A Machiavellian person will manipulate you into giving them more than they will ever give you. Typically, Machiavellian comment in the workplace is, oh, you are so good at this, can you help me out? All these traits are more or less sadistic. That means that they enjoy causing pain in co-workers or partners, etc. But most sadistics are narcissists, then psychopaths, and lastly Machiavellians. The problem with hiring a taker is that they want to take things from the rest of the team or company and give nothing back. Imagine you own a company or you are a manager of a team that needs to perform. If you have hired people high in conscientiousness, you will have people showing up to work on time every day and always perform. They might not question what they are doing, but they will work hard for you no matter what. If you also hire agreeable personalities with high altruism, they will be givers and give more than they take. Now, that company or team will always outperform and there is no limit to the capacity of production. But for you to not overproduce bad things, you also need to verify that they are high in openness to exploration. That is because they need a high ability to conceptualize. That is the ability to understand if you are doing the correct thing or the wrong thing, sending your company into bankruptcy. Now let's talk about introducing a taker into the team or company. The taker will start using givers. After a few weeks or months, often in three months, the givers have become matchers and matchers will only give one thing for one thing gotten. As you can see, you put a cap on the top of the company or team, all because you hired a taker. I will finish with a quote from a scientific paper I highly recommend so that you get the idea that you need to read more scientific papers in the subject. Quote, one of the most important revelations of this experimental research was that narcissistic individuals who entertain social acclaim and success in their prestigious careers positions manifest the regressed psychopathology encountered in mental patients diagnosed with narcissism. This finding may serve as a warning to the possible adverse consequences of electing narcissistic leaders into a high governmental position or authorizing a charismatic yet psychologically defective individual to run a major corporation. The ruthless and thrilling compulsion to maintain dominance and sovereignty usually becomes conspicuous only after the narcissistic individuals has aggregated the necessary authority to relentlessly exterminate opposition. How to spot a taker in an interview? It is very simple to find them. Adam Grant, an organizational psychologist, found this easy way of identifying them. Ask the question to all your prospects together at once. The question is, can you give me the names of four people whose careers you have improved. How to interpret the answer? If the answer is that the four names are more influential than them, then you are interviewing a taker. If the person names four people that are below them in a hierarchy, then they are givers. There is no advantage to helping people that have it harder than you. That means that the person is a giver and a good individual. Now you know what to ask in order to weed out the takers from your company and team, making sure the work environment for the team and staff is not becoming unbearable making sure the productivity stays high. Of course, you can ask these same questions to all your staff right now. That would be an inventory of how many takers you have in the company and your respective teams. You can also take action and buy them out in a professional manner depending on the outcome. Like the science says, if you want to outperform as a company and team, you can simply put not a lower taker to be in your company or team. So what's the takeaway from all this? Add 
a personality and empathy test before booking an interview. Many researchers on the topic of malicious personalities actually recommend that in their scientific reports as a conclusion and advice to hiring managers, especially if you are hiring accountants. That will determine the outcome on performance. You will also know how they will act towards each other. You can yourself learn how to interpret the results by watching my video on how to combine personality and empathy. I will link to it down below. When you only interview the conscientious, open and altruistic personalities with adequate empathy levels, you will make sure during the interview that they are in fact not takers. You will also reduce your valuable time not talking to people that will lower your company's output and wreak havoc in the company and team. Remember that the takers most likely will create situations you, as a manager, have to deal with. Imagine the headache that they will be for you to sort out. Imagine your best staff leaving the company due to it. This way you have done the most you can do as a hiring manager regardless of the gender you are interviewing or their level of attractiveness. In the upcoming videos, I will talk more about how to identify bad personalities in different stakeholders so that you know what to expect of them in your office, stakeholder management. I highly appreciate you for watching this far. Thank you and please leave a comment down below, like and subscribe for more content like this, and I will hopefully see you in the next one.